Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to do this pretty general video on things like working rocks and how to tell if rocks are worked or not. And believe me, out there are millions of people, not millions, but a ton of people out there that can distinguish that better than I. But I think they just need to, or maybe we should modify what we consider a rock that's been worked on. Like with this rock, if you see these lines, let me bring it closer. There's a line going across, starting here, goes straight across, and it picks back up on the other side. Right there. Very neatly cut. There's also a line here that does the same thing. It comes down. You can see this inch better. And it comes across. Let's expand this a little. Okay. There's one here that goes around and across. And one here that goes around the spin chip. And they're cut so finely that they're, they're hard to distinguish. But this was taken apart and put back together. For what reason? That's why I say what is the... Per and it was worked. But why? You know, there are images on the rock. Let me back it up some. And hold it in different ways. And after a while, they do become a little bit more obvious. Now, I inadvertently had left this rock in water for about a week. What I noticed is there's the very slightest of slight uh, tinge to the water. And when it dried, when the rock dried, I noticed that this part was lighter than it had been before. And for me, those could be interpreted as images. You know, all along here, here. Now, like I say, what were the purpose of these rocks? Are they, uh, definitely some form of, of keeping history of communication maps, all those types of things, but they will work. Maybe some resin-based adhesive was used to bring them back together, put them back together. You know, I think with some of the clear crystals, maybe they uh, powdered some, some of the similar type of crystal and mixed it in with some resin and put them back together, but what was the purpose of taking them apart in the beginning? What was put inside them? Well, they shaped a certain way, the images on them, were they placed there for a purpose. And the use of light is very important in seeing a lot of these things. Like in a regular light, this is a big rock, basically. But when I put light on it and I move the light across in certain ways, let's see, finding the right intensity is so important. Now you start to see potential images come out right here to the side. If I turn it a certain way, now it looks like a reddish, a reddish brown skin there. And as I come up to the top, I see an image here and here. And as I go down, there are varying images. That's why if you only look at your rocks in regular light, there are things that you might see or might not see this piece here. certain things you might miss out on I try to use the light at all different angles to try to catch uh, either figures symbols that I might not see under regular light you know and again like everything try it yourself 
like that light's a little strong so I bring on a light this that's basically barely there and sometimes those work better and helping you see what's there than the stronger lights possible image here and here and some of you will see others from the bottom all the positions of the clock you know use 11 o'clock 12 o'clock you know shine the light at 3 o'clock shine the light at 12 o'clock did they use something like a artist clay or something to make this part and attach it but again, it's just questions uh, on what tools we're looking for to say a rock was worked. Um, was the rock etched? And with this crystal that I'll show you now, it has varying degrees of density or light and dark in crystal. This was pieced together like composite. It, it, they, they just kind of put it together like a composition. All of these have full thickness cracks going through them. Take that away. Bring it up. Let me show you the rock a little closer. See these lines. At one point, they went all the way through the rock. And there's nothing on the surface of the stone. Everything you see in these images are inside. And all those separations are where I believe the rock was put back together. Again, with some type of adhesive. With what purpose? We can speculate. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you don't pass it off as fact. Actually, it's healthy. Sometimes we drink the Kool-Aid a little too fast and base all the rest of our thoughts on what we think is correct. And of course, an assumption made off a of fallacy is going to be a false assumption. But like I say, and this is just to look at your rocks when you bring them in. If you find a crystal that looks kind of all beat up and, and, and you know, kind of just rough, look at it and see if it was made to be that way. For me, there's another image there. Here. And you guys, like I say, these these videos are first run, one time, one time runs. There's no editing going on. I don't know if it's more so for your entertainment or to raise some questions in your head about the way things are done and what's said about rocks and the way they're looked at. So sometimes it can look like, what the heck is he trying to show? Because pretty much that's what I'm doing. <laughs> what the heck is he trying to show? A lot of times I won't know until I see it myself. Uh, let's see. Of course, I don't think there's any doubt about this one. I like glyphs. When I turn it forward, it looks to be like some kind of and again with that said 
a lot of this and a lot of what I do is just to not impress you with how much I can show it, but to get you to go out and try it too. Um, this rock I want to show you because looking at it just looks like a brown rock. Let me see my very weak flashlight. If I put a little light on it, see if you can start to capture the image that is actually, there you go. That's not from a break or fracturing of the rock. That's an image in the rock. I think in my next video what I'm going to do is get some removable ink, some water-soluble stuff, and a couple pieces of paper and just like a stamp, put the images on the paper. And you can see for yourself that these aren't random fractures and cracks. Like I say, look at the nondescript rocks when you're out rock hounding. You know, sometimes there's a lot more to it than what it looks like. Like I said before, maybe those beautiful rocks we call Jimmy are just blanks. They haven't had information put on them yet. Wouldn't that be like something that they would try to get us to value as something without any value? But anyway, I digress. Okay, this, like I said, it's a random video. To me, it looks like a, a small animal, elephant-like animal. You see the ridges on the top. And this, I think, is where the long snout would have been. Maybe eyes set somewhere here. It's a little crystal cavern here. Uh, let's see. I think that's that's pretty cool rock. This is just another crystal. I won't say just. This is another crystal that when you look at it, you can't really see the images on it until you put a light on it and move it a little bit. Now for me, I start to see something come up here in that area. This one I've had in another video, it just looks, oh, that's very, very, very bright for that. Now, looks like a clear piece of quartz or calcite, whatever you want to identify it as. But when you turn it a certain way and put the light behind it, it makes a pretty cool projector slide. And I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, give, a, give a real big thank you to uh, Bare Naked Stones. If you've never been on his site, you talk about some pretty rocks. It's like he's one of those guys that find interesting things in his sleep. And Paleo Mountain Man, you know, Jimmy, you know, very cool guys. I mean, I really, really had, I really, really had, I had family tragedy recently and they you know we were talking and I mean they're just they're just really cool guys besides having great rocks and things to say and I appreciate them and I really you know heartfelt thank you I mean um okay see I all right uh Thanks for looking in, you guys. Thank you.